This is an overview of a very nice piece of freeware called Plan G. It's a uh, flight planner. You can find it at tssoftware.co.uk. And it also has several other features that we'll touch on a bit. This would be the page you would find it on. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a download for the two different versions for Windows uh, XP and for Windows 7 and 8. Make sure you get the right one. There's also a user manual that's available. There's also a three-part user manual on the ElitePremierVirtual.com website. We'll show you that at the end here. And again, freeware. You can feel free to donate or purchase one of Mr. Arnott's books. And my bride is an avid reader and says this is uh, good stuff. So uh, you can take that as a, a high recommendation. And this is what the basic uh, map set setup looks like on Plan G. The very first thing you'll need to do is to build the database. This has already been done, of course. And you can see you can do it for FSX, FS9, Prepared 3D, and uh, Xplane. You can have all of those databases loaded and use whichever one of those applications you happen to be on. So again, we take a look at the map. There's various features here that uh, you can see. First thing we'll do is we'll actually connect our aircraft to uh, Plan G. Click the Connect button, and you'll see that we're uh, displayed here as a big yellow airplane on the map. Going back up to the menu, click on the View button. You can see that there are several things that you can bring up. The uh, first thing we'll look at here is the information box. This is uh, the way that information is displayed when you hover over something in Plan G. We'll move that a little closer here and give you a demo of that. Simply uh, putting the mouse cursor over a facility or nav aid, you'll see that it brings up lots of good information. Here we are at uh, San Antonio International. And you can see the uh, details of that airport, including its elevation above sea level, the available runways, and their uh, length and width, key frequencies, including the ILS frequencies, uh, various uh, COM frequencies uh, for associated with the airport, and anything else that might apply. The same thing happens. You, have, you hover over a nav aid, like the San Antonio VOR, you can see that it gives the frequency and its elevation above sea level along with its latitude and longitude. This works the same way for pretty much anything you see on the uh, map. If you hover over it, it'll put information in the information box. Randolph Air Force Base, there's uh, similar information to what we saw at San Antonio International. So we'll take a look here for a moment at the radio stack in the Baron 58 with the NAV1 standby frequency at 108.75. If we right-click on the San Antonio VOR, you see that there's a couple selections to set the VOR frequency in NAV1 or NAV2, and we'll set it in NAV1, and you'll see the frequency 116.8 appear in that spot. You can then swap this to the active frequency and uh, enter another frequency, enter this in uh, NAV2, wherever you want. Same thing uh, applies to the ADF, tunes exactly the same way. You right click and select to uh, tune the ADF to that frequency. Another feature of Plan G is that you can see other traffic. All of those little red airplanes represent other pilots. And you can see we're zoomed out quite a, quite a long way. The default Plan G setting for seeing other traffic is limited to 200 kilometers. There is a tweak for that, and that's described in the information that's on the Elite Premier Virtual website. But we'll, uh, we'll pick those planes down there in the lower right-hand corner where they're clustered together and uh, give you a look at what traffic looks like on Plan G. You can move the map to uh, different places by clicking and holding, right click and hold, and dragging the map over. We'll put the cluster of traffic in uh, approximately the center. In the view section there are preset zoom uh, settings and it makes it easier rather than have to click the plus button or minus button uh, multiple times. We'll center them up, zoom in a little bit more and you can see the traffic 
that's currently going in and out of St. Martin, Princess Juliana. Give you a little closer look here and you can see that there's a small trail that's formed to show you the direction of flight, although the little red aircraft symbol does point in the direction of flight. And you can adjust the frequency at which the uh, user aircraft and uh, traffic updates. I have mine set at two seconds. If we click the sync button again, it brings us right back to where we are. Uh, sync puts the map together with your aircraft. If you try and move away from your aircraft, it'll shoot back again. And we'll show this in a second. But um, in order to set up a flight plan, which we'll do next, I'm going to need to uh, switch it back to the free mode. Otherwise, it will shoot right back again. So we'll click free again. Then we can right click and hold and move the map and uh, even move our aircraft completely off the map. It will not snap back. Move the mouse back up to the view selection tab. And here we're going to pick the plan box. That'll show us our flight plan as we build it. And we'll also use the information box to let us know about the airports we're picking. We want a suitable one for the Baron 58, which is what we're building this plan for. So we'll pull up the, uh, the information box. Go back to the Home tab so that our times and distances will sync up properly with our Baron. Uh, we'll change the airspeed to 155 knots. Once this is all set up, we can then select our starting point. We right click on that air airport and you see Start Flight Plan at Airport Tango 94. Click on that and you'll see Tango 94 Twin Oaks appear as the first waypoint in the flight plan box. We then go over to our first stopping point, 2G Ranch. 1 Tango 1. Right click as we did before and select Add 1 Tango 1 to the plan. Click on that and you'll see that now 1 Tango 1 2G Ranch appears as the next waypoint in the flight plan box. Notice too that there is time and distance to that point and now a black line has been drawn for you between the first two points. Proceeding on, we can select our next waypoint and we'll, we'll pick Hawthorne, right click again as we did before, select add 45 R Romeo to the flight plan and it will be uh, added as the next waypoint in the flight plan box. And you can see the black line is now extended from 1 Tango 1 to 45 Romeo. Again, um, time and distance. And in this case, you might say, well, I, I want to make an intermediate stop to break up this fairly long leg. And this can be done uh, very easily. So we'll uh, move our map over and look at Hooks Memorial and you can see that that's pretty much uh, about halfway in between those two. Go up to the top in the Home tab and you'll see a Edit link. And When you click on that link you'll notice that halfway in between each leg will be a little white box with a little uh, black starburst around it, sort of a black cross with a white box center. And All you need to do is right click and drag that box to the point you want it, let it go. It does take a few seconds for the uh, plan to work it out, but you'll see that now Hooks Memorial has been placed in between 2G Ranch and Hawthorne. A simple drag and drop process to, to, that makes this happen. Likewise, we can break up the uh, first leg into two separate legs. And we'll uh, right click and drag our map over and here it looks like Gonzales Municipal is a good candidate. So we simply once again grab the little white box, right click and hold, and pull it down and drop it on top of Gonzales Municipal. A few seconds later the plan updates and you see now Gonzales Municipal appearing between Twin Oaks 
and 2G Ranch with distances between waypoints and times updated accordingly. And you'll notice that each time that you drag and drop the, uh, the little white box to a point, the line again splits into two halves with a new little white box parked over the middle portion of the line in between each waypoint. And you can drag this middle box anywhere you like. For example, if we wanted to fly uh, from 2G Ranch to the Eagle Lake VOR and then outbound to our next destination, we can drag the box over to the top of the Eagle Lake VOR and notice that it's been added to the flight plan and included there is also the frequency of that VOR for your convenience. Both heading and track are shown for uh, each leg and in this case the track and the heading are the same because we have not set the winds but if you do plan G will automatically calculate the proper heading uh, required to maintain the desired track. And uh, as I said you can drag and drop this uh, plan edit box anywhere you like. And for example let's say we have some uh, land just south of this Federal Reserve land shown up here in green. We can click on the edit box and drag it to the point where we want to start to overfly our property. Drop it and you'll see that a generic waypoint WPT1 has uh, been placed into the flight plan. And we can edit this, simply right click on it, say rename user waypoint and this will bring up uh, a dialog box that will allow you to put a, a different identifier in there, some short uh, kind of identifier so you know what it is, and we'll call this Ranch 01. And then you can put a longer description in here. We, we'll call it East Ranch Grazing Area. Click the OK box and you'll see that that uh, now updates in the plan and if you save this, and we'll show you how to do that, it will sa save as that user waypoint with that description. Likewise for intersections, you can add them. Here the Honey intersection for uh, Hawthorne Field is used for the NDB approach for runway 13, so we'll drag this over to the Honey intersection and drop it over top that intersection a few seconds later. Plan G will update and will include the Honey intersection in your flight plan. And you can see here that the waypoint is a defined waypoint and it is described as a named intersection. You can u also use this drag and drop process to change your flight plan. For example, if we want to move our destination, we can just simply drag and drop from one point to another. But do be aware that the little box is going to lock on the thing it finds closest. And here it found the Weber NDB uh, instead of the airport that we wanted. And that's an easy fix to make. You just simply zoom in a little bit so you can distinguish between the two and move the little box to the point where you want it. So we've uh, zoomed in a little bit. So we can distinguish wiser field from the wiser NDB, move the box over, and now the flight plan shows the proper place that we want to go. And again, you can uh, use this feature uh, for moving to any kind of point, uh, even user waypoints as we showed. And if you click the frame button, it'll put the entire flight plan in the frame, and now you can see our flight plan laid out from beginning to end through all of the points that we assigned. And with just very little practice, a flight plan like this can be built in just a few minutes. And the more you do, the easier it becomes. And we can now export this flight plan for use in any number of uh, flight simulators, Flight Simulator 10, uh, Flight Simulator 2004, or FS9, X-Plane, or uh, export this as a Plan G snippet file. We won't go into that, but the user manual describes it. That's a handy feature. We simply click on export in the format we want to click it on, and your uh, play plans are saved under your documents 
uh, Flight Simulator 10 files in this case and you can make subfolders as I have here. There is a default naming uh, convention for this. You can change this entirely or you can just add to it something like Baron 58 and the date so we know that this uh, flight plan was built around an aircraft like the Baron 58. You click, uh, click Save and your flight plan is now available to be loaded into your aircraft for navigation. And here we are back in the Baron. Go up to the main menu, click on Flights, Flight Planner, and this will bring up a large dialog box you're probably familiar with. And you click Load, navigate to the appropriate folders and subfolders where you've saved this particular flight plan. Select that flight plan and click Open or double click on it. And click OK. And normally we don't uh, click on the yes box because it, otherwise it puts you on the active runway. Instead we'll move our aircraft over to a parking spot which is the most appropriate thing to do especially in multiplayer. And we'll bring our GPS up and you can see the magenta line and the indication that our first leg T94 to T20. And we uh, click on the flight plan button on the GPS and you'll see that all of the waypoints are already in the GPS. You don't have to do any additional programming. Everything is right there. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see the first leg is the magenta line and each leg yet to be flown is shown in white. You can zoom all the way out and once again you see the entire route. Very similar shape to what we saw on Plan G. And We'll go back to Plan G and I want to show you just a couple of little things. One is in the files section you'll notice that the recent files are listed uh, the 10 most recent ones, including the one that we just made, uh, are available and you can simply click on them. Uh, otherwise you need to click on the open box and this is a stumbling block for some. They don't realize that when you first open it up it says, ooh, where would all my flight plans go? Well, what you need to do, even though we're in the right folder and subfolder, is to click on the type of file which is a FSX FS9 flight plan and then they appear. And then you can click on the one you, you want and you can load it right into Plan G. Likewise, you can load any of these flight plans into FSX or FS9 if that's what you're flying. Another feature is if you go to My Documents Plan G Files and select Trail, again, you see no files. But if you go to V3 Aircraft Breadcrumb Trails, you'll see that there are many, many files here. Any file that you've already saved as a Plan G file or an FSX file or F9 file will be automatically saved after you use it by Plan G. And this includes the breadcrumb, hence the name, that uh, that you you formed when you flew the route. Uh, this is a uh, altitude profile box. We'll close that. And this is a handy thing. You can go back and look at your flights in the past. You can actually use this connect to FSX and fly your airplane and compare it to previous routes. One of my main uses for this feature is to critique myself in doing approaches and you might recognize this particular approach from one of our uh, videos on the series on VOR navigation, the VOR Runway 30 approach into Merced. So here we'll uh, zoom in a little bit, right click on the El Nido VOR, you won't see that box come up, but you will select a feature known as QDM range and bearing. And when you do, it will attach a little red line and show you the bearing of that line and the distance that uh, your mouse pointer is at. And we wanted to be within 10 nautical miles of the El Nido VOR and we were 9 miles. Uh, and uh, on the 109 uh, radial and looks like we were on the 109 radial both inbound and outbound. So come pay us a visit at ElitePremierVirtual.com. We do have additional information on uh, the Plan G as well as other things. You can find us on FSX. Our server address, our Direct Connect server is listed there. And you can uh, see us on TeamSpeak. Come in and join us. Uh, ElitePremierVirtual.ddns.net or simply come to the website and click on if you already have the TeamSpeak 3. 
in our useful links area you will find various information some things that we've talked about before and uh, information including the Plan G tutorial as well as a download for TeamSpeak. And this three-part Plan G tutorial where you can click on the link there and get all three parts starts with how to get Plan G and how to install it, some basic configuration all the way up through using Plan G for building flight plans and many of the other features that we didn't cover here in this uh, video. It also tells you how to override the Plan G maximum traffic visibility setting.